happened here in this opening Cornhill Test match, England against the West Indies. England 245 and 301 for three. West Indies 448 for nine declared, a drawn match, and Malcolm Marshall was named man of the match by the adjudicator, Ray Illingworth. The opening day of the second Cornhill Test match at Lords. Welcome to the highlights with the two teams equal as they come into this match. England having got out of the Trent Bridge Test with a most gallant draw, Graham Gooch hitting that great century in the second innings. Conditions were marvellous here for the opening day of this match. Lovely sunny moment when the two captains went out to toss. This time it's Vivian Richards and John Embury skippering England for the first time. And Vivian Richards not absolutely certain what he wanted to do once the coin came down in his favour. Eventually, he decided the West Indies would bat, and those are the teams for this match. West Indies go in unchanged, and England have the change of uh, Moxon for Gatting, and then Gladstone Small coming into the side with Philip de Freitas as 12th man, and John Embury is skipper in place of Mike Gatting. Well, those lovely sunny conditions I mentioned when Vivian Richards won the toss and decided West Indies would bat changed quite dramatically with a heavy cloud cover coming over. Perhaps it might be one of those occasions where it's not absolutely essential to be a good captain. Being a lucky captain might be just what you want. We pick up the play now in the very first over. Graham Dilley is coming in. Gordon Greenwich is taking strike and there are no runs on the board. Not a bad ball, it was well up and it was just swinging gently away, but Gordon Greenwich made all the distance with that front foot. Such an easy stroke. Slightly surprising that West Indies did choose to bat first. The groundsman yesterday said that he'd had some rain which hadn't been forecast on the pitch on Thursday, and although a fierce wind had dried it out, there was obviously still a little moisture there. The surface unlikely to crack, a good even covering of grass. It's flicked away by Greenwich. A bit of sparing effort there by Jarvis, but a second boundary for Gordon Greenwich. He's got one or two unusual feet placing this morning, is John Embry. Very deep gully, and man just behind square as well. Graham Dilly now to come in and bowl to Desmond Haynes. He hasn't got one there. And even if there had been one, he wouldn't have wanted to be a yard away from that. It was so perfectly timed. Yes, you won't get a much better shot than that. Gordon Greenwich played one early on, and that was equal to it. And a real buzz around the ground, as there always is on the first morning of a test match here. More movement for Graham Dilley from the opposite end. Again, away from the right-hander. And the England opening bowlers will be encouraged with, with the way the ball's moved around. And if they don't get a breakthrough soon, there's just a possibility of a little frustration setting in because there's definitely movement there and they have gone past the bat. So it's important that they, they keep their mind under control. Almost a replay of the previous delivery. Groping forward, not in a position to play it. Or bold. It's a great performance by the man at short leg, Martin Moxon, and boy, did Dilly deserve that. Tremendous catch this, especially from somebody who doesn't normally feel there for his county side, Yorkshire, bat pad to his left and having to dive forward to superb catch and a very well-deserved wicket for Graham Dilley. 
He and his court locks in old Dilly for 12. When he's just not out, eight, 21 for one. There's a cracking shot. It's a great catch too, but that's true reward for Graham Dilley for an excellent spell of fast bowling, where the outswinger has posed many problems for the West Indian batsman. Yes, fine bowling by Dilley this morning. He's had a good stiff breeze behind him, worked at good pace, a little bit of movement and a perfect example of the outswinger. Nothing much the batsman could do about that. Perfect length, he had to play. And that's a great wicket for England because... Uh, Gordon Granger has made uh, Lords one of his favourite grounds. He's got some marvellous scores here, but uh, he's gone there, caught Downton Ball deal for 22. He's certainly gone past the bat on numerous occasions this morning, Dilly, and fully deserved these couple of wickets. Yeah, I think the greatest thing by Dilly this morning is he's got the ball close enough to that off stump to make the batsman play. Just occasionally at Nottingham, he bought some good outswingers, but they were just that little bit wide of the off stump. So when he beat the bat, so people didn't have to play, it was just that touch wide. But this morning, he's got that outswing going round about off stump, just outside, and batsmen have had to play it. Now, four slips and a gully. And that's worked. The extra slip comes in. Embury takes the catch. Richie Richardson continues his bad trot on English pitchers. And... England are doing it well at 47 for three, the West Indies. Yes, and good captain by John Embry, strengthening that slip field to Richardson. He's been a bit vulnerable outside off stump, taking his final leg away to get the four slips in there, and Dilly producing just the ball for it. Very low down, just carrying there to slip. Another foot deeper, and he certainly wouldn't have made that. So delight there for John Embry. That's 47 for three now. 22 to Greenwich, 12 to Haynes, 5 to Richardson. Richards not out, 6. Uh, it's been a good morning for England. Carl Hooper is the new batsman. 21 years of age and made a great impression at Trent Bridge. off the mark with that three and Viv Richards is on six Gladstone small and that's it small breaks through and the movement that's been there all morning now suddenly the edges are being taken and it's all going England's way so there's the end of Carl Hooper who played such a cultured innings at Trent Bridge A bit of extra bounce here from uh, Gladstone Small. Not moving away a bit, but just bounce a little bit higher. And the new batsman is Gus Logie. Oh. A leave alone shot, and that could have gone anywhere. Logie again trying there to take the bat out of the way, getting the bottom edge and four runs for it, but very near that off stump. Oh, and that's out. That's out. There's the wicket that England wanted above all, Viv Richards. A fairly loose stroke, but again, Dilly getting the bounce and the movement. 
And now West Indies in all sorts of trouble. Half their side gone, including the captain. Dilly again producing that outswinger. A little bit of bounce. And again, the ball going straight to slip. But again, Downton pinching it out of Pringle's hands. Dilly to Logie. Oh, and there's through. That's at catchable height. Wouldn't think that a ball could thread its way through there. Well, a little bit of fortune here for the West Indies for the first time this morning. Who wants it? Well, what? Should be the last ball before lunch. Dujon to face it and Dilly Bowl. Another away swing as he's probed around that off stub all morning. And the end of a great spell for Graham Dilly. Unchanged 13 overs, 4 for 35. And he's deserved each and every wicket. And what a great start and a first session as test captain for him. John Embury, David Gower, must be wondering what would have happened had they batted first, but Embury lost the toss. The weather changed, the sun went, the clouds came, and Dilly burst into top form. Graham Dilly leading them off, and why not? And the batsman he got out, well, just look at that pedigree batsman them all Desmond Haynes was the first one lovely short leg catch by Marty Moxon and Richardson and Greenwich and finally the biggest scalp of all Viv Richards England bowlers have all done John Embury proud one chance missed that's all but apart from that it's been England's morning Beautiful dark shot there off the toes, and again, marvellously quick outfield. Chris Broad having no chance there chasing that down the hill. Oh. It's a fast outfield, but uh, when you lay into it like that, it goes even faster. Good shot by Gus Lurgy. Yes, uh, Gus and Small just losing a little bit of control this over. That was a pretty good shot. It wasn't a full half volley. A little bit on the up. Certainly giving it the full treatment. It's in the air, but that's safe. Now, that was a false shot, aiming the ball straight down the ground, and the ball flew square on the offside but between Gower and Lamb oh yes and that's Gus Logie's 50 he's been positive about everything four by the shoes so far and one of those, Jarvis, is now coming on at the pavilion end. Members end to take over from Gladstone Small. There was a catch dropped at slip earlier in the morning. That one didn't actually go to hand, but they have been flying around about the slip area. shouts of bad luck around the ground but 
Gus Logie's prepared to give it a dash out there. And so far, he's made 59. Mark that down uh, as a chance. That's beaten David Gower. There's a run down the hill there. Makes it awfully difficult for anyone to save a boundary once the ball gets past you. Yes, nice stroke off the front foot. Good follow through. No need really to run once it goes past the fielder down that hill. Has been uh, all out studious defence to try and uh, get their way back into the game. 100 out of 134 in boundaries. John Embury now coming on for his first bowl of the match. There goes another big hit, but not really getting hold of it. Embury to Dujon. And that's the 150 up for the West Indies. And they've made pretty rapid progress there. The end of 46 overs. And the 150 came up after 278 deliveries with the last 50 the quickest of the lot off 73 and I think that really shows just what their approach is when they're in trouble they're prepared to go for the shots here's a great shot showing just all the extravagance of Geoffrey Dujon's stroke play and that's the 100 partnership well, there's never been any doubt that Dujon can play shots. It's just been this choice of when to play them that's been the problem sometimes, but uh, he's certainly played one or two good ones today. Paul Jarvis loosening up from the nursery end to replace Derek Pringle. Well, giving it the full treatment, and that's another boundary. And really, they don't hold back. Just adds to the, the frustration, but it's width. You see the ball's been bowled wide enough to allow a full extension of the arms and the bat. And down it's gone, and that's the third chance. Juggling effort there. Once again, the unlucky bowlers, Jarvis, driving at it hard. Gooch is right, up in the air. There it is again. No, no. Oops, and down. From this angle, really got... Oh, <laughs> how frustrating. Yes, it was, because Gooch had actually knocked it back up with one hand, and then the other hand inadvertently palmed it straight to the ground, otherwise he would have taken that at the fourth attempt. And that's the game of cricket. Jarvis to Dujon. And that's four runs. That's Dujon's 50. Eight fours. His runs have come out of 177 for five. And out of a sixth wicket stand of 123.
Two more to do, Jean. Embry to do, Jean. Seven runs already off this final over before the tee interval. Oh, and that's bowled him off the inside edge. And one thinks that the T interval might have dealt with Geoffrey Dujon there. Just determined to play with an angled bat, and in fact angled it so far forward, didn't kill the pace of the ball, and back onto the stump. So Ember is the man who's finally done what England have been seeking to do ever since lunch. piece of work he's taken a couple this year that have been absolute blinders and uh, to deprive Gus Logie of his century by 19 runs John Embry has just taken another one yes it certainly seems to be the place to feel against the West Indians they all go for the square cut and off the back foot they hit the ball in there square on the offside and yet again the same shot not quite on top of it hit pretty hard and John Embry just managing to Hang on to it, doubling up. Probably the ball coming out of his hands. And uh, he hit that with great power. That's the first grab from Johnny Embry, and then the clutch into the body. Graham Gooch put one down, having juggled it four times. But uh, that has stayed there. The most valuable wicket for England, and a nice moment for the New England captain. time there's no juggle around for Graham Gooch and Graham Dilley has full reward for a terrific performance here at Lords today Marshall the man to go Dilley five wickets in a test match innings for the sixth occasion and England having a marvelous day here the first day of this second Cornhill test Graham Dilley's fifth wicket and almost exactly the same as he got a couple out this morning. Pitching off stump, leaving the right-hander high up the shoulder of the bat, and Gooch making no mistake. With Gladstone Small from the pavilion end, Kirtley Ambrose, the batsman. Oh, it's Burnley caught. Marvellous catch that by Gower. Fast to his left and diving high, and uh, Kirtley Ambrose is gone. Caught Gower, both small for naught. And just to have a, a second view of that. Beautiful catch. Timing the leap to the left with great perfection. And that's the card. 199 for nine. Small to bowl to Walsh. There's a big hit. Should be out. Lamb underneath it. And he's dropped it. Two runs in the end. Well, wicketkeeper Downton could have got there. The bowler could have got there. But in the end, Lamb took the responsibility. Yes, I suppose really the keeper should have kept on shouting for it when he's in that position. But it's not often you see Alan Lamb drop them when they're up there. Three, four goes again, and down it went. But Downton could certainly have got there pretty easily. And it is usual to leave it to the keeper if he can get there. That's bowled in. Reward there for Small, who'd seen that sky dropped. Well, he did feel really just a matter of getting one ball in the right place and. Laxton Spall imagining to do that at the finish. Dilly's gone past the bat time after time. 
Matt Small making the ball go slightly in there and ending the innings off at 209. So a marvellous performance there by England and a great day for John Embry as his first day as appointed captain of England. Though. It certainly was. And not only did Embury captain England with uh, a certain amount of skill and authority, but he had a bit of luck as well. Now, I always think that is uh, the prime requirement for any skipper. West Indies, 209. I think England would have settled for that at um, the start of play today. And certainly West Indies would have when they were 54 for five. The opening stand and then Logie and Dujon, very good performance from them. Fine innings from Logie and a terrific performance from Graham Dilley and Gladstone Small. Dilley, five for 55. He had his outswinger working well. He pitched it just about perfectly most of the day, just on middle and off stump and swinging away. A very good effort from him. Four wickets to Gladstone Small and one to John Embury. Well, when England came out to bat, uh, the light had faded a little. We promised plenty of sunshine here at Lords today, but I'm afraid it didn't eventuate except at the toss. And when Gooch and Chris Broad came out, conditions uh, weren't all that good. They moved along to 13, and it was at that point the first wicket fell. Chris Broad is the man taking strike, and Malcolm Marshall is the bowler coming in from the nursery end. Oh, it must be. It's got to be uh, one of the plumbest things ever, unless he got a touch on it. First wicket down for England. Ooh, well, did it pitch in line with the stumps? That would be the big thing. Not a question of whether he got a touch on it. He didn't get near it, but uh, it did come back a long way. After Chris Broad's dismissal, Martin Moxon came in. Survived one tremendous appeal for OBW where he didn't play a shot and it looked to be perilously close. 20 for one England finished at the close of play and the bowling figures from the West Indies, they used uh, only Malcolm Marshall and Patrick Patterson. One for 11 for Marshall, Patterson, no wicket for nine. Been added to the overnight total.